So today what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at the Power XND Mark II from Aurora Aperture. Finding a variable ND filter is very hard and very expensive. I only know of one that's actually decent and that's the Helio Pan, which can run you maybe around $200 or so. But I saw a Kickstarter this year about these guys called Aurora Aperture and they're making a second version of their Power XND. Now I actually haven't used their first version, but apparently they're really good. So I was actually really curious to see how well their second version is, which is what we're gonna be looking at today. Here's the casing. I have the Power XND 2 128. It is one stop to seven stops because honestly for videos, I don't use higher than that. So the maximum I usually use is around four stops and that's pretty much it because as you all know, the higher ND you use, the more IR you're gonna get or the more pollution you're gonna get. So let's go ahead and unbox it real quick so you can kind of see what it looks like. I actually thought this was my, uh, my contact lens because the packaging looked like a contact lens to me. Just a note to Aurora, make sure everything is black next time because it looks more professional, right? Anyways, so like I said, this is the ND2 to ND128 or one stop to seven stops. Let's go ahead and open it up. And here is the filter itself. I'm gonna blow this dust real quick. All right, there you go. So here is, oh, who is that handsome guy? Anyway, this is the actual filter itself. I have the 72 millimeter, which I think I paid maybe less than $100 for this, which is pretty incredible considering it is a variable ND. So it goes from minimum, you can turn the rings like this, from minimum to maximum. They do have markings on the side, but I asked Aperture about this to see if I can kind of tell what stops those markings are, and they said the markings on the side are just approximate, so they're not exact. So you're actually not gonna know if this is one stop, two stop, you're just gonna have to guess. And that kinda sucks in a way, but for the price point of this filter, you just can't beat it. So the front filter does not rotate. So if you've used a variable ND filter before, most of them rotates up front. That means you can't put like a lens cap on it or you can't put any other filters on top of it. You can't, you can't stack filters, but this one, you can definitely do it because the filters do not rotate. Now look at that. So this thing right here, the little knob, you can remove this and I am, I think I am gonna be removing that. Uh, I just don't know how well I'm gonna be able to turn without that knob on, but we'll see how that works. So the first test we're gonna do with this is just an indoor test from minimum to maximum. So go ahead and stay tuned with that. We're gonna see how clean this variable ND filter can go. 